Um, what do you, can you describe like your typical, well, I know in the news stream it's not going to be all the same days, right. everything is different, but what, what's your like routine? Right. Like, so, yeah. you um, and you know, I should say that that's probably the beauty of this job, because you never no. know what you're going to be doing from day to day. For me, I anchor on the weekends, and so it's pretty much staying in, in the building and reading scripts for the 6 o'clock and the 11 o'clock news, but it's the other days that I really like, uh, the three days a week where I'm reporting. And typically a day is set up where at 9 o'clock every morning we have an editorial meeting. So all the reporters, the producers, the managers throw out story ideas, mm -hmm. and then they decide which of those story ideas that we're going to cover for that day's newscast. And so that's uh, pretty much how it works. But that's not to say that your story will change in the middle of the day. Maybe that story you're assigned isn't working out. Or uh, in my case, um, on Friday I was working on a story that had to do with President Obama changing the minimum wage or salary um, structure for employees. And I'm in the middle of that story when we got word that um, there was a woman whose body was found burning up in Alpine that they oh, identified wow. her. So they said, okay, you're moving to that story. And so in the middle of the day, you know, my story changed and we started gathering information on that. And it was interesting because on that day, I started out as an MMJ working by myself. Mm -hmm. and then when the story changed, they assigned me a photographer because we had to go out and do it. The anticipation was that we were going to be live somewhere. Uh, and so that's why I needed a, um, a photographer for a live shot. And what motivated you from the beginning until now? Uh, what keeps you motivated to do it every day? Just people. Just, you know, it's great, it's awesome. You get a chance to, um, you know, you go out and learn about people and get to meet people. And I mean, it may sound a little corny, but I thrive on that. And then here, um, maybe you could feel it, I don't know, I, I feel like I work with a bunch of really, really good people. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it starts with my co-anchor, Danya. I mean, I think, I'd like to think that we have a really good working relationship. And I, you, you saw how we were kind yeah. of joking around. And that, and that too helps, you know, relieve some of the pressure and the, and the stress that goes along with the job. Yeah, and then, um, would you, what would you consider your most significant project or accomplishment in your career? Mm raising my two kids <laughs> but um, I know you're asking journalistically um, you know I think at this point gosh I've done so many stories um, people ask me oftentimes what was the biggest story that you ever covered I really don't have an answer but what I think right now is important to me is the credibility that I've established with um, my viewers I mean and that comes with doing it for such a long time Danya, <laughs> and so I'm talking about you. Um, and so it's you know you you work a lot and um, and you you know you establish a certain credibility. And I've been here long enough where I can go to a story and people will recognize me and they're willing to you know give me information that you know, maybe otherwise if they weren't comfortable with a reporter they they wouldn't. So that's pretty important to me that I've. Um, you know, established a credible presence in San Diego, which is cool because it's my home city, and so yeah. that's really. Oh, no. <laughs> and then, as a, being a reporter, has have you liked it? How it like kind of like gives you a little boost in being part of the community, being involved with community yeah, events and absolutely and all that. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, um, it, you know, part of the job is to you know to to be out in the public representing the station, and I do a couple of events every year. Um, I work with um, a group in the North County that helps uh, Latino high school students, or actually they're middle, middle school students, but we work to help keep them in school through high school. Um, something else, else I'd like to do is I, I talk to um, public safety academies. Um, I go to different schools and talk to um, um, you know, future law enforcement, future police officers, future firefighters, and kind of explain to them um, what we do as members of the news media because you know Frank there's a lot of people have negative perceptions of, of the news media mm -hmm. and um, sometimes the working relationship with law enforcement can be a little bit challenging and so you know I get a chance to go out there and say okay look I'm not here to change your opinion of the news media but I want you to know that this is what we do and this is what we're charged with and so it's not we're, we're not bad guys it's just that you know we're trying to gather information mm -hmm. to get it out there and how had you had you ever had difficulty with that starting off, or was it always like um, an easy flow? No, you... it's you know there are times when um, there's a little bit of um, an adverse relationship when you're trying to get facts at a you know at a particular news scene, and maybe um, 
there's a law enforcement official who's charged with you know keeping you a distance away, and you need information and you want information, but it's just not there. And so it'll it eventually comes, but it's just you, know, you deal with that sometimes. Yeah. And outside of work, um, like what? Who is Artie Ojeda outside of work? <laughs> yeah, oh, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> no, one of the things that I I'm passionate about is running. I run marathons and half marathons, and. Oh, wow. um, it turns out I was, uh, many years ago, uh, I was uh, anchoring the weekend morning show. We had a guest who was running a marathon to raise um, attention to the um, Liver Foundation because her daughter needed a liver transplant. So she's there with her daughter, and on the air she challenged me to run a marathon. <laughs> I'm like, uh, what are you going to say? Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay, I did it, and she held me to it, and so I started running, and I caught the bug. And so, you caught, um, so you caught the bug from meeting, like, meeting a person yeah, with your job. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, that was in the year 2000, so that was 14 years ago. And I, gosh, I've, I've probably run about 18 or 18 to 20 marathons and countless other half marathons. And so I'm, a, I'm pretty well running. known in the running community around here. So, yeah. And do so, you speak Spanish? No, no, I mean I don't speak it fluently. fluently? I, I speak it a, a little bit, enough to get me by, but and, usually enough to get me, help me find somebody who speaks English. <laughs> <laughs> and would you say that would be? Do you speak Spanish? Um, I speak a little bit, yeah. but not like enough where I could yeah. have a whole con like a fifteen-minute conversation. Yeah. Um, do you think that's a disadvantage if if you were to be able to speak yeah. Spanish fluently? Yeah. How? Oh, smoother gosh. would it go when you're uh, out on there oh, you know you just night and day I mean I can't emphasize enough how important it is to speak Spanish in mm -hmm. San Diego because of the proximity to the border yeah. obviously and you know the further south you get you're going to be having to you know, work with more Spanish speakers and um, and you know there are some people who are bilingual but they just feel more comfortable speaking Spanish and so mm -hmm. that's definitely an advantage when it comes to you know gathering information and um, um, putting people at ease if you can speak you know, 